If you're like most people in the West, if you've even heard of Christmas Island, that's probably because of the famous annual migration of red crabs. You may not know that the British explorer Captain James Cook discovered and named Christmas Island in the late 1700s. But those are two different islands. Christmas Island with the red crabs is in the Indian Ocean, northwest of Australia. While Cook's Christmas Island is about 6,700 miles to the east in the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Island does not have any red crabs. But it does have plenty of birds, including the native reed warbler. And offshore, it has plenty of reef sharks. As described in the book, An Island Called Christmas, Christmas Island is a coral atoll in the Northern Line Islands and since 1979 has been part of the Republic of Kiribati. It is now called Kiritamati, which is a respelling of the English word Christmas in Gilbertese, pronounced Karasamas. Back in December 1777, Captain James Cook sailed his two ships northward in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, looking for new islands to discover. During the night of 22 December, the resolution and discovery crossed the equator. Cook, for the first time, sailed into the North Pacific Ocean. Of the voyage northeast across the northern Pacific, a few days before Christmas, many tropic birds, boobies, and men o' war birds were seen, all betoking land. Just after daybreak on 24 December, low land was sighted ahead. By noon, it was only four miles distant. With the aid of his glass, Cook identified a few coconut trees in two or three places, but in general, the land had a very barren appearance. Cook wrote of their discovery as one of those low islands so common in this sea, a coral atoll that looked barren, but that Cook thought might supply turtle. With turtle in mind for Christmas, Cook ordered his two sloops to anchor off a raging reef. He sent off a boat to reconnoiter. The petty officer in charge found no break in the reef. Cook was not satisfied, and the following morning, after naming the atoll Christmas Island, he sent off sailing master William Bly on a further reconnaissance. If anyone could find a way in, his sailing master could. And yes, it was that William Bly. The man who later became famous for losing most of his crew to a bunch of young ladies in Tahiti. But anyway... Bly soon returned, having found a channel on the north side, though it was unlikely to be navigable by the sloops. When they sailed to the entrance and anchored outside it, the channel proved to be scarcely navigable even by the boats. Midshipman James Trevenin was put in command of the small cutter, and later recounted the experience. The service was rather a perilous one, as we had to pull through a narrow passage, where we could see the bottom the whole way. Had any sunken rocks projected higher than the rest, we would have been destroyed. On every side of us swam sharks innumerable, and so voracious that they bit our oars and rudder, and I actually stuck my hanger into the bag of one while he had the rudder in his teeth. What kind of sharks did they encounter? We don't have an exact account, but an online article about nearby Palmyra Atoll states, at least seven species of sharks are known to frequent these waters, but most common are gray reef sharks and black tip sharks. Gray reef sharks are a curious and aggressive species, repeatedly indicated in human attacks. Some divers rate the gray reef shark as the world's third most dangerous, after the great white and tiger. Virtually all attacks result from a diver's intruding into the shark's territory, violating the animal's sense of secure space. From the shark's point of view, such attacks are defensive. The sharks are not trying to eat the person, merely to drive the diver off with their teeth. Apparently, the sailors in 1777 did not appreciate the shark's point of view, because the crew did a great deal of fishing and fought off rapacious sharks, which they diverted themselves by torturing. Sometimes two were firmly lashed together by their tails and turned adrift. Well, that's not very friendly to the wildlife, 
But that is how the crew's introduction to the specific atoll got started. In part two of this short series, we'll look at what happened when the crew landed and explored this small island. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, online resources, and films featured in this video.